No one wants to watch, dude. No, but it doesn't matter because this is... That's all that matters. No, it's not. UFC is nothing if no. people don't want to watch it. No, hear me out. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Bulletproof for BJ podcast. In the blue corner, Joseph Worthington representing No Gi Jiu Jitsu. In the red corner, JT Tenasti representing Gi Jiu Jitsu. Ladies and gentlemen, which is better and why? No Gi versus Gi. The age old debate. A tale as old as time. Let's hear it out, ladies and gentlemen. Joe is going to be uh, arguing on behalf of Nogi, all the, all the good things. Very good. And I will be arguing on behalf of the more traditional Gi. Well, Nogi is clearly better. What else is there to say? <laughs> Podcast over. Don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We need to talk it out because this is one of those things. The reason why I wanted to have this chat is I had um, a couple of white belt friends hit me up and be like, what should I choose? What, how do I start? Because it, there has been a divide. Now, traditionally in the past, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll point to Marcelo Garcia. Now, this is like slightly older school, and we'll, we'll evolve it. He trained eighty percent in the gi, and he only did no gi one or two days a week, compared to huge volume of. That's Eddie Furlong turning around too. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting pursued. So. Uh, from what I understand, talking with Fabio Gagel and the guys at Alliance, back in the days when Marcelo was winning the ADCC, he trained predominantly in the gi, yeah. but he trained almost a, a similar game. Yeah. Uh, uh, his gi game was very similar to his no gi game. But because jiu-jitsu has evolved and no gi has evolved in such a dramatic way, you can't really do it that way anymore. I mean, if we go back to the, say, the, the episode we did with Shanji Hibero. Yeah. Shanji's still a strong support proponent of gi guys do better at no gi and that it's but right like he's yeah. obviously comes from the old school yeah but he's like no nah. he's like you know and he whatever like marangali tan and dalpra like you know there's there's been plenty of athletes victor hugo that that have successfully done both but if we look at the greatest no gi competitor of all time gordon ryan he does not train the gi that's right so you've got to say that's a that's a fair data point to to, to say that the best person in the world at no gi uh, yeah, look, I think comparing one guy versus many, no. However, hey, I'm arguing for the geek. Shut yeah. up, Joe. <laughs> but <laughs> no, let's but get this on track. <laughs> but I, but I do, but I do think that just, yeah, I think that this, they are diverging, and that we we're seeing crossover. But five years from now, ten years from now, we will see much less. Yeah, and and so w the way I wanted to break this down is, it's not that I prefer one more than the other, but I think. Each has a valid point, and I wanted us to go back and forth. Well, Gee's been given a bad rap. That's oh, I think yeah. I, I think at the crux of this, and with the with the explosion in no gi jiu jitsu, I think that the gi is like people like yeah, the gi's kind of lame. No, but I think it's just well, let's get into it, shall we? Let's go, cracking the knuckles. The gi is more technical. No gi is kind of easier in that way. It's not that no gi isn't have it. It doesn't have its. It's not that it doesn't have its own technical aspects, but because the gi creates so many more problems, so many more controls, so many more f encounters, it is more technical. There's more to learn. I believe this is beneficial. So let me make my point. <coughs> Skill acquisition is something that keeps you engaged. So there is, a, there is a point at which if a game is too easy, you lose interest in it. And that's why... Oftentimes with any video game you play, there'll be increasing levels of difficulty as you work your way through the game. Mm. And if you're a Mario Brothers fan, if you can complete the game on a certain level of difficulty, you start at the start and it gets harder and harder and harder. The Gi provides infinite levels of technical information. So if you're a nerdy technical person, you're going to love that. But then there's probably a counterpoint, isn't there, Joe? There's always a counterpoint, James. Tell me, what is the counterpoint? Why, well, why is that not cool, Joe? Why implicit is that? in your argument there, James, is that there's an end point of technical development in no gi, which I disagree with. No, I, I wouldn't say that. I'd say there's less. There's just less There's options. less, but it's still infinite. Yeah, which I, yeah. which, so I think that's, you know, forms basis of my counterpoint, is that it's like well, there's still a f more to learn in no gi than you have time for, right? Yeah, that's probably true, yeah. Um, coupled with the constant evolution of things. Um, I think that the, 
I, I do agree, right, that there's, there's, there's more, like there's more complexity in what can happen in the gi. And so in that regard, where I see the drawbacks of that, uh, the, and, and, and tell me if I'm, if I'm going about this contest in the right way, but I see that as a drawback for the fans because I think from a spectator point of view, that increased complexity makes it more boring to watch. Potentially, right? Potentially, um, and yeah. But in terms of the skill journey, I, 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 I'm, I'm like, yeah, I think it is more tender, but I see it as a moot point because there's, there's already more than enough in Nogi. Yeah. Well, look, I, I, I think, yeah, you, that's accurate. I, I don't f- the fans. No, <laughs> I'm looking at it more from the perspective of the practitioner. Yeah. The person learning, and definitely there's those out there. They, they want that technical stuff. They want every little detail. But then there's some other people, Joe, who like to jump guillotine in their first class. That's really And they don't give up. F- into someone's elbow, hey, that's on them. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I guess to my mind, why I, why I like that aspect of no gi is because you can have more of a sense of knowing, right? Where you're like, oh, I'm actually getting somewhere with you this You can shit. know less, but feel Where, smarter. Huh? Yeah. Whereas in the gi, whereas in the gi, you're like... Sick, got that down. Then they're like, "Hey, there's this new shit. It's called Worm Guard." And you're like, "Ah, f- <laughs> <laughs> ah f- another thing," you know. And they're like, "No, nah, no one's doing that anymore. It's all about this f- and, uh, inverse K guard shit." I don't f- know. It's a no gear game, but you yeah, know what I mean. Sure, but- and some and and for people like me who like to keep it simple, and I don't geek out on the shit. I'm like, "Whoa, this is getting way too infinite for me." So it it, it can yeah, yeah, can be a drawback. Pro- yeah, it can overwhelm. Right, like yeah. too much info, but. This is, what I'm, this is what I want to say is the next step on the more technical thing. Gi Jiu-Jitsu is harder. It is. It is absolutely harder. Now, let me qualify. Harder right how? Now. Yeah, right. Let me explain. So recently in interview, um, Fionn Davies, who is a world champion in no Gi and also Gi, had said Gi Jiu-Jitsu is harder. Now, she, she knows Jiu-Jitsu better than I do. That's for sure. Um, but it was interesting because she was like, if you roll with a black belt world champion in the gi, you're, you're kind of, you're f***ed. You have no option. But in no gi, even though you might roll with a black belt no gi world champion, you can, like if you're sweaty enough, you, you can you can do some shit. You can just move and, and maybe you get out. No technicality involved, just, you know, spazziness. And, and, and it doesn't mean you're going to win. <laughs> it doesn't mean you're going to have great success. But the way she was explaining is if you're putting like world class versus world class, there is absolutely no margin of error in the gi. You know, you're, you're kind of, if they, if they get to where they're trying to go, you're done. Right. But it, with no gi, there, because there is more freedom to move and there's less friction and there's all these aspects, you, you have a better chance. So therefore, it is that that was her reasoning. She said it is not as hard. Now she's an expert. And don't I'm, just no. Fion said it. Hey, I didn't hey, say it. I'm it just the me. messenger, bro. Don't me, but, but I mean, <laughs> no, no, no. But, but also having trained judo as well, getting gi grazes, getting someone gripping you. It's there's no you can't. If oh, someone yeah. has an insane grip, like especially judokas, if they grip you the way they want to grip you, you, you can't break their grip. Yeah, I, and I mean, no look, option. Uh, Today's episode was brought to you by Parry Athletics. They are our preferred apparel sponsor. They've been sponsoring the show for some time now and they do the best gear in the game. They do the best training shorts for the gym or on the mats and they always have awesome designs for all of their custom rash guards. Now, if you would like to get yourself some Parry Athletics gear, we can get you 20% off when you use the code BULLETPROOF20. That's right, folks. You get 20% off when you use the code bulletproof 20 get some you and i i yeah like training if you train with a world-class gi athlete like you're (laughs) if you train with a with a world-class no gi athlete also you're slightly less (laughs) but you you might have 20 seconds of compare you know where you're like stand up like oh defend the underhook like oh like you know or like (laughs) you're trying to pass the guard you're like oh didn't sweep me that time kind of thing but if it's world-class gi mother they're just like, I, and, and I'm thinking about like when I've rolled with Levi or rolled with sure. like Marillo from, from Alliance and you're yeah. just like, man, there's such a gap here. Yeah. But if you're training no gi, it's like you can, it, it makes this, it kind of shrinks the, shrinks the gap somehow. Yeah. There's and still I'm, a 
Gap, don't get me I'm wrong. Not, I'm not looking for you to agree with me here, <laughs> Joe. No, but, 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 let me, but let me point that out. But then let me say, I still don't understand what is meant by harder because I don't know, like, I, like, f- like fair observation, the skill gap is, it changes, here, right? It dilates more on one, but what's actually harder about it? It takes you much longer to get better at gi jiu-jitsu than no gi jiu-jitsu. Right. So we're seeing, for example, athletic killer right good people like, a, like a a Nicky Nicky rod. rod perfect yeah. example dude who has wrestled and is uh is just self-belief yep. Out, yep. Uh, Athletic next level. And, yep he's coming in and he's messing up dudes in no gi we haven't seen him in the gi right so i have no, i actually a, don't know about his gi level but even gordon ryan who we point to him not not because i love gordon but he put the gi on and he was like that was a dumb idea. He was like, oh, fuck it. Because <laughs> I think he was actually like, I'm going to make a run at Gi. Because he's like, he did seem like that for a little while. He yeah. thought maybe he's going to do it. And then he, what do you say? Um, training in the Gi is like uh, having sex with a condom. Yeah, right. It's, it's way, way more friction. And it's way harder to finish. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> well, whatever, whatever you say. But, but for me, I think it being harder and slower, like that journey to, to proficiency is a good thing. This is my argument. So yeah, so so it's harder to it's harder to get like it's slower, it's slower. to get good at it. So yeah, so let me because I just think that because for a lot like it's like harder. Like, have you been in an elite no get like in a, right? No, like, no, of course. But that's I've what I mean. I think the I think the word choice there is poor. Okay, I apologize. I'll take that up with Fion. Don't worry about so, it. Fionn, <laughs> let's talk. We'll see you at ADC. <laughs> we'll see you at CJI. We'll, we'll work it out. But the slower aspect the time effort the struggle to to proficiency is actually good for us because so much of life is sped up like you know whether it's internet speeds it's delivery from amazon it's the expectation on you as a human to get do anything in life like everything is hyper speed this is actually for us as humans having something that is hard slows us down and actually makes us pay attention to details is actually really good for us. I actually think it being the difficulty and the slowness of it is a pro, not a con. That's what I would say. Yeah, I yeah, and I I, I agree. I think that could be again viewed either way, right? Could so be, what 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 is the what is the counter? Well, the other option to? is that you're like, oh, I don't want to go on a. F-ing. It's the same as that overwhelm piece about the amount of techniques. Like, sure. oh, I don't, I'm not interested in that. Whereas something that's like I don't want to go on a twenty year Odyssey to be okay. Yeah, like marginally more simple, like slightly more simplified. Okay, I can wrap my head around this a little bit more. Oh, I can use some natural talent here. Like that's a strength as well. Yeah. Right. But of course, there's value to to the long game. Um, I I guess so. Here's a here's a counterpoint to that, which is that you could like gaze slower to learn, right? And so it takes you longer to get to this elite level. But then you could argue that then when you're there, you're like king of the mountain. It's, you have this kind of, because you have this intimate knowledge of this highly complicated skill set, like people who are coming up, like can't fuck with you because you're, you're at that elite thing. Whereas you're a no gi cat and you're a black belt and you've competed in a few ADCCs and then Nicky Rod comes along and puts it on you. You could see that as, holy shit, this is hard. This is really hard i was an expert in this and this person with amazing natural talent and a good you know base of jiu-jitsu that's growing and 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 obviously now has grown right he's a a bona fide jiu-jitsu athlete but you know in his early days you're like well this is really hard because i can never i'm never that far i'm always under threat i'm never that far away from someone who's highly athletic who can put it on me. So hang on, no, no, so let's, let's recontextualize hard. That's hard for established people or that's hard for new people? That's what I'm saying. Well, I'm that's, that's, that's hard for established well, people. Yeah, well, that's, but I don't, man, f- them too. No, I'm talking about some, being someone new. That's what I'm, I'm, you're coming into this jujitsu journey. Oh, you f- didn't tell me that, dog. Bro, I did, I said at the start, five, five, five white belts hit me up and be like, yo, what should I choose? Anyway, it doesn't matter, we, we'll work it out. Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the athleticism piece, right? Because this is important. The gi, from my perspective, indi- uh, indicates a level of control. It gives you control. It gives you handles, right? It gives you all these grips. You do not have those options. Yeah, in, in grips no and gi, friction. Right? Grips and friction. So it does actually give itself more to strength, even though there's always the classic thing about jiu-jitsu about don't use your strength. Um, 
Hand strength. Hand strength. Finger strength. Grip. And this appeals to an older person <laughs> because actually here's the thing which actually works for you over time. You build up a certain degree of, uh, I mean, damage, but tendon and ligament strength over time. They talk about old man strength, right? Or old person strength. Yeah, if you had 20 years of grabbing shit, you get those grips, you lost Swinging hammers and f***ing screw on screws in Whatever it might be, like that's... That yeah. you, once somebody gets that grip, very hard to break. Whereas if you're younger, you've got maybe better VO2 max, you, you know, you're more athletically inclined, you can do a cartwheel, no grips, no problems. You know, previously, like the saying from judo comes, no grip, no fight. But in nogi, who gives a f**k, right? Like it's, you're seeing people do just very easy cartwheel passes and just slash and dash and move around. And that's where I feel, if we look at how it might appeal to a person, even though I feel the gi, um, I, I think it's great for beginners to start in the gi. It also speaks to maybe an older generation coming through who've just found jujitsu later in life. Having the gi to control is helpful. It's not often, and obviously we're, we're pretty early in the journey. It might be too early to say. I don't know. You might see a super fight between Gordon and Nicky Rod when they're both 60. You know, like some Rocky-esque shit. Jesus, I hope not. <laughs> but I'm just saying, <laughs> provided they both live that long. But, it, but, but it's one of those things that I believe you are not going to see the same longevity in no gi as you do in the gi uh, yeah i would agree you with know that. you got megaton diaz you got guys who are fighting masters masters worlds is huge in the gi yeah i'm not sure how big it is in the no gi like i would have to check that i, I would agree with that for sure um yeah gi jiu-jitsu lends itself to a to a longer journey however from personal experience gi takes a toll on the joints it does and there's a there's a level of of talk on the joints and manipulation that is you can't really replicate in nogi mm. right and, and and of course you can damage motherfuckers in nogi right you can crush squash twit you can do smash. everything yeah like you can snap shit but think about when you're playing against someone who's got an amazing de la Hiva guard and they're threading their legs through and you're like rotated in multiple directions and they're pulling on this shit and you're like, oh, like those forces on the body can only be achieved. Like that combination of forces can only be achieved in the gi. I do find where I'm at right now, let's say mid journey, um, no gi is kinder to my body. Really? It is, it is, How absolutely. But I have, I have, you know, I'm still, I'm still athletic and strong and I have that base, right? Yeah, maybe. maybe once, you... once that is more diminished, yeah. it, it's gonna be a different story. Ladies and gentlemen, do you suffer from sore and swollen knuckles after a hard class of jujitsu? I have the answer for you, the finger teen, custom designed by our friend, the Grip Physio. Now, these wraps are specific for your fingers, wrap them around, work them through and reduce the swelling so you can recover faster and be back on the mats in no time. You can get 20% off when you use the code BULLETPROOF20 at checkout. Go to thegripphysio.com. Dot com. Yeah. Okay. Well, look, I, and so I think, and, and so it can, and it can also lend itself to both sides, right? Like, I, you know, I'm sure you have too. I've trained with gi practitioners who are, who are on the older side of things mm. and they're extremely good at just staying safe and defensive and not getting hurt and also not exerting themselves. Like they've found a really great efficiency through their jujitsu. And I think that that's a hard thing to build in as much the, in no The gi. efficiency is not there. We no. can say that, even though you, it might be inefficient to learn it because there's so much to learn. Once you learn a good chunk of that knowledge, you now have an, a, a moat, a defensible. Whereas once you're sweaty and things are going down to no gear, you could be, <laughs> you could be like this single leg usually works, but you got someone hop and move and like, yeah. we know that more movement is required in no gear. Absolutely. And I'm going to say that's a lot of, hard work yeah right that more movement and that i believe lends itself to a younger person game so then here's the here's the drawback on that truth which is that you can get out of shape and still play in the gi you can right and you, you can, and fat that's brown belts am i right let's yeah. go and that's a that's you know however you want to see it right can be good can be bad you can totally neglect your health generally and still be a mother like it's true in the gi Whereas no gi demands that you gotta you gotta keep up a bit of conditioning, you gotta stay in a bit of shape, 
And so depending on what you want from your jiu-jitsu, right? Do you want to get late? Like, do you want to neglect everything? Or do you want it, do you want it to be a force that, that helps you stay in shape, that makes you want to stay in shape? I know it's I do. Good, it's a good question. It's a good question. Now, I'm going to come down to, I guess, uh, a, a, a different point here, which is, is maybe a little bit more philosophical in a way, mm. is going to the longevity piece, going to the uh, slightly bigger journey piece, that you putting on the gi connects you through thousands of years of martial arts, putting on this this piece of armor, essentially, what you might wear under your armor as a samurai or whatever, right? Look at it how you will, romantically yeah, or the, not. The kimono, kimono. Is, a, is, a, is a traditional wear, right? Yeah, and people hate on that, right? People hate on that. But what I think is valuable is this makes us think about ourselves not necessarily as athletes, this makes us think of ourselves more as martial artists. Now we're both. Like it's this is just a way of thinking. This isn't this isn't to say one is right or not, but let me share this frame with you. And I've said this before. That the value in you putting on the fing gi and being connected to some of these, some of them, not all, not the indoctrination, not the bullshit, but some traditions from the past give you a context and can give you an appreciation for these skills you're learning which can actually change you as a person in a great way. What we have not seen in the no-gi is a huge amount of humility. <laughs> we, <laughs> biggest assholes rise to the top. Woo! Gordon Ryan. Woo! Craig Jones. Like, it's a show. We're entertainers. This is the UFC. Because it appeals to How the entertainment... Why are you going to put Craig Jones in the Gordon Ryan bin right there? Because they're... they're pa- like, what? They're, they've risen to the You said biggest asshole. Of, you think it's yeah. an asshole? What? We're not talking about that, Joe. Yeah, but people are going to be like, JT, why'd you say that? Bro. I'm talking for the people right because now. Because I always say that. <laughs> when do I not say that? I might be joking, Joe. It might be ironic. But what I'm saying here, folks, is no gi, if we look at it, even though there are some nice, humble people in there, I, I mean, whoever you want to class. <laughs> no one's ever heard of them. No, no, no. The Rotolos <laughs> are really nice guys. No, I've met they them. They're lovely, yeah. right? Mikey Musumeci, even though, he, you know, he can have his times of not being happy if he's not eaten enough pizza you know he can get upset but if we look at the way that nogi has moved towards entertainment and it has and gi jiu-jitsu has benefited too right like it's not people are moving towards that mma thing of being an entertainer as well as being an athlete yeah to get the money to get the views to get the attention right it's part of the business yeah gi jiu-jitsu doesn't give a f- about that no. And that's, there's value in that because so much of our daily lives are what's on Instagram, what's trending, what's popular. And all that shit at the end of the day is not actually healthy for you as a person. So even though jujitsu can create problems, gi jujitsu can create problems and its own little world of anxieties, the value in it being a martial art and connecting you to a tradition, not the cult shit, but the good shit, is it is a counterpoint to the entertainment, the need to want to be commercialization. Yeah. Anyway, just what do you, what say you, Joseph? Well, I think yeah, I kind of I think they're kind of two separate points, which are both very valid. I think that yeah, gi jiu jitsu does does sit within the martial arts context in a in a much in a much deeper way than gi jiu jitsu does. Gi jiu jitsu is like a sport. No gi. Sorry, no gi jiu jitsu. It's a sport where it's results driven. Gi jiu jitsu still obviously results driven, still a sport. However, has this martial arts context, right? You go to gi, g- gyms that have more of a, a no gi heritage. There's usually a bit more structure around it, more bowing, you know, more formality. Uh, and I personally really like that stuff. I think that stuff goes a long way. And I think some, that's some people hate it. Well, that's right. But I think that's you know, for some people, that's what they want from from their you know, that's part of the martial arts journey for them. Some people just want to be savages. And they're like, yo, take me to the gym where I'm going to learn heel hooks and I don't have to bow. <laughs> and that's, that's awesome too, right? So, yeah, I, but I, I do see a diversion with no gi where it is. And so if I'm looking down the track and I'm like, what's a value? Say, so what do I want my son to go through? What do I want him to? I don't know. I don't necessarily want him just to go in and become the absolute best grappler he can be. I also want him to be under the tutelage of a coach who sees the value of of their role as more than just teaching the greatest techniques or the best systems. 
They also try to instill certain values in them. They maintain order. When, the, when my son goes to that class, there is a sense of discipline and hierarchy um, because hierarchy doesn't exist in many other places anymore, right? So oh, No, not necessarily the case. Like in companies, in many things, power dynamics and hierarchy does exist. It's yeah, just maybe but, not but openly not, but, talked but about. But not in, not in the way that it does in martial arts or say like the military is probably the only other one. Sh- sure. Right? Where it's enforced. Where it's like that, that person is superior. Like that, yeah. they're a higher rank or, than you. That's an idea, yeah. Yeah, right? So... Um, and of course, it can be abused, but but I I like I really value that, and I, so I'm like, well, I, I like the martial arts context as well as the other one. So, yeah, if I'm looking at it, I I can't say which I think is better. I, I do think that the that gi jiu jitsu holds a very special value in that way. Right. So, so I can't disagree with you on that point. Um, well, I think you're a f-ing idiot, but that's a separate thing. <laughs> okay. The, cool. <laughs> good. All right. The um, we agree. Do you find you get thirsty at training? I do. I do all the time. I'm a sweaty human and I need to hydrate. Now, the biggest problem is by the time you're thirsty, it's a little bit late. You need to hydrate. And that's why we got Sodi. Sodi is sponsoring the show. We've got all the colors of the rainbow. Great flavors here. We've got salty citrus, salty pineapple, salty berry, and my favorite, salty grapefruit. And they will be releasing two new mystery flavors soon. So, Why do we need this? It's going to prevent our muscle cramps. It's going to help our energy delivery. And it's also going to mean you're less tired, which is an advantage when you're training. If you want to maximize your jujitsu and feel good when you're rolling, you need to get SODI. And when you purchase, enter the code BULLETPROOF20 at checkout for 20% off. Oh, yeah. To the point about the entertainment side of it, right? I um, totally agree, right? Like, Like... but the, the, the benefit of that is that, like, probably, I don't think e jitsu becomes anything in 10 years' time. I don't think it's anything beyond this niche thing that people who are really into this thing do and it's still pretty much at the level that it is. Athletes don't get paid. Maybe you have sort of one-off events here and there like Spider, and, you know, where they're like, oh, we got $50,000 for the winner or 100000 But it doesn't take off, right? It stays pretty small. I think no gi jiu-jitsu has the power to become like a, a, a household name in terms of combat sports. And I think that in that regard, that could be seen, right, depending how you look at it, as a, as a, as a major strength. Because like, well, that's the thing that's actually going to create professional athletes, leagues, and, a, and, a, and a, 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 a destination for people that really want to make a career out of that sport. I don't think that's true. I think... Part of that is true. I don't think it's entirely true is what I should say. Yes, I believe the path of the growth of no-gi jiu-jitsu will go along those ways. I believe that will happen. But in the same way, jiu-jitsu has ridden the coattails of the UFC. No-gi gets really popular, right? And it's going to blow up. And it's blowing up. And that's awesome. That's great. But there's a critical point at which no-gi folks end up really... injured and can't keep on that journey right you're not 21 anymore you're 35 and and you're like you know but the next 21 year old comes through of course but then what happens to all the broken 35 year olds they off and get a real job no that's what sport that's what athletes do bro you You got like you got like five years they put on the gear that's what they do man yeah but no one wants to watch dude no but it doesn't matter because this is that's all that matters no it's not UFC is nothing if no. people don't want to watch it. No, hear me out. Here is the thing that we are f-ing forgetting. The, the internet has got us brainwashed. It's not about other people paying attention to you. It's about you are paying attention to you. It's about you working on you. And I believe the gi brings that degree of focus. So, yes, yeah, I but do my believe... Point there was specifically around the, the growth of the sport, yeah, right? And, and the popularity and, and of I'm not thing. saying I'm not saying that... Gi Jiu Jitsu will be bigger than no Gi Jiu Jitsu. That's not what I said. I don't believe that Gi Jiu Jitsu blows, no Gi Jiu Jitsu blows up and Gi Jiu Jitsu just stays the same. No, I don't believe that. I believe it will actually feed into it. Because once you've gone through your youth and your athleticism and your injuries and your everything, and you can't do no Gi Jiu Jitsu the way you always wanted to, you're like, oh, my kids are into it. Oh, I'll put on the Gi, yeah, f- it, why not? You know, like I, I, if we look at the trend, which is, people coming to jiu-jitsu later in life, even though you've got lots of young savages doing the ADCC, you're going to see more older men and women putting on the gi. 
because you can and you can keep it up. No gi, you can't. That's why I think for all my reasons, the gi is better. Well, are you wrapping it up there? Almost. Because there's a point you haven't made which I think should be, should be spoken. Please. But yeah, I think, I, I, yeah, that, that point there I'm like, but, but the, the, the world growth, I think that will be attributed to no gi. Sure. And so then it's like, well... It doesn't matter where it's attributable to. I don't think you can just say gi jiu-jitsu will die. I didn't say... I say I, it would say more or less what it is. No, I don't think that's... I think that's, that's the wrong assumption. Yes, no gi will... I, be, I am, no, you made your point. I'm agreeing with you. Yeah, yeah. So what is the point that's not been addressed, Joe? The point that's not been addressed is that I do think gi jiu-jitsu teaches you certain things that you can fudge over in no gi. And I, I, one of the greatest examples is like posture in guard sure. and posture when passing. Lapel. Yeah, you cannot, because someone can grab the f***ing, grab your lapel up next to the neck and like pull you. I think that it does, t you, have to, you have to get very good at certain fundamentals that perhaps you can get away with not having such a good grasp on in no gi. Potentially. Now to that point, no gi would, has its own fundamentals. Yes. Right? Different kinds of things. Uh, but I, but I do think, and that's an old argument that like sure. the gi does enforce those things, and I, I still hold that. I'm like, yeah, I think it does. I think it teaches you some shit that you kind of can't get away without. Like, like if you can be good at those things, that will transfer to your no gi game potentially. But I mean, so what's the, what's the conclusion, Joe? Is no is no gi better, or is are they both good? Well, I think um, it's very hard to put like a three-year-olds kind of that's better than that sort of title on it why that's what gets yeah, the clicks I, I damn think it it's, i think it's contextual and I, for I me hate, i hate how nuanced you're being uh, right now yeah I, i'll tell you for me no gi's better for okay. me no gi's better i love watching it i love doing it that's all that matters right but if you're saying hey for someone who's starting out i'm like well what do you like i think it's good to explore both but sure. you know i think that at a point you probably need to Put your eggs into one basket. Mm. Damn. Joseph Worthington, your partiality has destroyed my internet hook. But that's all right. That works. And so there it is, folks. Obviously, there's going to be different, um, different sides. But I love both in, in all truth. But it is getting to a point in the game where, yeah, you might have to choose if you want to get really freaking good. Yep. All right, folks, thank you so much. We appreciate it. If you watch to this point, you stuck it out. You are the you are the 20%. You. And what we love about that is you are the kind of person who is going to watch more of our other content. And you're also probably someone who's going to like and subscribe, which we appreciate the most. And if you're listening to this on Spotify or iTunes, give us a five-star rating. We appreciate it. Peace, man.